You can only work because I introduced you to that part-time job, you know. If I didn't do that, you'd still be doing dog shit housework every day while I went and worked my absolute ass off. If you divorce me, you'll be nothing but an unemployed hag. Seems like you don't know anything about what's going on, huh? All right then, take a look at this. My anger towards my husband, who always condescended to me and made me feel inferior to his stupidity, finally exploded. I exposed all of the evil doings he'd been doing behind my back for quite some time, and he was going to pay well for his heinous crimes. My name is Kayleen, and I'm a 62-year-old housewife. I lived with my husband, Jackson, and we have a daughter, Haley, who's all grown up and living on her own now with her own job. At first, our family was very close. Every time we met our neighbors on the street, they always complimented us on how close we were. Jackson always prioritized the time he would spend with his family, which was so nice. And my daughter loved her father very dearly. She always said she wanted to marry a man like her father, someone kind, strong, caring, independent, honorable. Perhaps that made my husband really happy because he showered his daughter with love and affection very much. I'm a housewife, and I supported my husband and my daughter for around 20 years. I only did the housework and didn't have any job of my own, but Jackson never failed to show he was very grateful to me for what I did to take care of the home. Originally, my husband wanted me to become a full-time housewife. I hope you understand when I say that I want you to focus on raising our darling daughter. I want her to have a lovely mother and a good home to live in, so she can grow into the best version of herself. He had very solid reasons why he wanted me to be a housewife, and heeding to his request, I quit my job. I also wasn't that hung up on my job, so I kind of felt happy that Jackson suggested I become a housewife, and I respected my husband's wishes. Twenty years have passed since then. My daughter is now out in society, with her own job and her own place and I lived with my husband. As time went by, my husband, who had been so kind to me up until a certain point in time, became a completely different person. To be more precise, as soon as our daughter spread her wings and left the house, he started acting strangely. Hey, hey, hey. You're not skipping out on the housework, are you? You're not even doing your chores properly. And just by staying at home, you have food on your plate. You must feel so happy to eat free food, huh? Why would you say that? I'm not slacking off on the chores. I'm doing it the same as I always have. You never had any problems with how I did things up until now. Oh, come on. I'm the one who makes the money. And you dare complain about what I think about your job around here. My, my. Seems like age really does make one cocky. He began to condescend to me. You're the one who asked me to become a housewife. I don't know how he could even begin to behave with so much disrespect. If he had told me that I could work myself, I have no doubt that I would be working. I was sick and tired of his toxic attitude. Thereafter, I did the housework in such a way that I also tried not to give him an opportunity for him to complain. I picked up the pace of the work itself and I also focused more on doing it well too. But in the end, he always found something to complain about and continued to look down on me. It was as though his new purpose in life was to find anything that could make him superior to his wife, and my life became miserable because of his tyranny. It didn't take long before I was at my limit. If my own husband was making fun of me because I was a housewife, if that really was the case, I thought I should find a part-time job and work. Haley is no longer at home, so I don't have to be at home all the time anymore. I'm going to find a part-time job. You've been a stay-at-home mom your whole life. How can anyone with such mediocre skills like yours work a part-time job? Where your skills determine how satisfied your clients are. No, I'm not going to let you work. You belong in the house. i just like to try. Please, Jackson. I pretty much begged him to let me work a part-time job, which in retrospect 
was absolutely stupid of me. But at the time, I couldn't think of any other way to convince him. For a moment, my husband donned an expression that seemed to suggest he was thinking about it. And then his face lit up as he had an idea. My company's looking for part-timers right now. It's a simple job of being a receptionist. Even a lazy old housewife like you could do a good job. But I'm the one introducing you to the job, so don't freaking screw it up. Can I really? Then yes, I'd like to try that job. Thank you, Jackson. I was hired to work part-time for my husband's workplace as a receptionist. It's not like all those young girls you'd expect to find at the receptionist desk. My job consisted of doing much of the public administration work, handling public phone calls, and servicing clients who dropped by the company for some business. Even before I had kids, I had a job that consisted mostly of public administration work, so I don't think I had any trouble learning the ways, and I was able to get the job done well. Ever since I started working, I'd been working away from my husband's department, which was in business, and I don't ever had need to see his face as I worked, which helped me greatly in that I could work comfortably. And someone with a position in the department where I worked kindly appreciated my work performance. After six months of service, my boss asked me if I could be transferred to the accounting department. I added the fact that I was a certified bookkeeper on my resume, and they had problem with sufficient staffing now that the company was bigger and more successful. So people wanted me to go to the accounting department and use my bookkeeping experience to the fullest. We would very much appreciate it if you started to work in accounts, Mrs. Brooke. Your performance recently makes us hard to believe you're only a part-timer, and you're a huge help to us in general. I think you'll have the experience to do well in accounting too, and we'd love to have you. How about it? I was very happy to hear that. My husband had been making fun of me at home, and had been chastising me every day for quite some time. But when I went to work, it was a whole different ball game. There were a lot of people who genuinely approved of my role in the workplace, and because of this, I gradually began to feel more at home at work. But perhaps he didn't like the fact that I was promoted, in a way, to a better job, and that I was feeling a lot better about myself because soon thereafter, he started to be picky about my work as well. Just because you've gone to the accounting department doesn't mean you're entitled to get cocky, eh? We are only short on staff, and that's the only reason why your boss was just talking to you. A stupid slug who can count numbers and write letters on paper. Normally, someone like you would never even be close to getting an opportunity to work for accounts around here. All right? Remember that. I know. I know. And also remember this. The only reason you're working for this company in the first place is me and my frickin' generosity. All right? Don't forget to show your gratitude, eh? Thank you, Jackson. I appreciate it. You know, a job with as much responsibility as mine will never belong to a low-life part-timer like you. At best... You'll only be doing your best as the company's lapdog. At home, you're my personal lapdog. And at work, you're the company's lapdog. You're nothing more than a servant, only able to survive under orders from someone superior than you. And your life is completely worthless. Why must you say such horrible things? There's no need to speak kindly to someone the likes of you. Now, he's there. Get the frick out of my sight. I didn't deserve to experience that level of abuse from my husband. Every day, Jackson went from being a sarcastic slime bag, chastising me and verbally abusing me, as if it were a matter of course. I was tired both mentally and physically from daily doses of such attacks. Whenever I was sad after she left, I would always call my daughter, Haley. I called her that evening, and she sounded so happy to talk to me. Hey mom, I was actually just about to call you tonight. How are you? When I heard her voice, I was so happy that all the days of being completely cast aside by my husband seemed something of the abyss, long forgotten, and lost in the past. For the next few hours, I was on my phone, talking with my daughter. I really enjoyed the time spent talking to her, but right as I'm having a good time, I couldn't help but remember. When she was still living in this house, really enjoyed the time we spent together as a family. We were so close, and I thought such a wonderful life could be a dream. 
Jackson was never abusive or even sarcastic to me like he was now. I was instead surrounded by a gratitude so genuine and a love so pure that every family in the neighborhood envied it. Now, I was being verbally abused by Jackson, so much that I genuinely began to wonder if such a thing as love even existed in this world anymore. It's been so damn hard, but soon after I was doing the housework, letting my husband's abuse go on from one ear and out the other. Now that I had an escape hatch from such a miserable home life with all his abuse and sarcasm known as the office, whenever I realize how much of a hard time I'm having, I'm already at the office, having the time of my middle-aged life. I'm contributing to a group of accomplished people. I have new friends who are mostly about the same age as Haley, whom I can hang out with during my breaks. And as a plus, I'm making a decent living. The work was great. Everyone enjoys talking with me, and I enjoy it likewise. And I have money to use for myself. I'm able to ignore the sarcasm from my husband because of how well I fit in with the people at my job. But I suppose Jackson doesn't like the way I was now. But I just didn't understand why he's being so abusive. If only I could get some kind of sign, then I could fix it. I know I could, because I wanted our old relationship back so badly. Is he actually trying to hurt me? Or is he just taking out whatever stress he had about his work on me? Then one day, there was an award ceremony, and I received an award in the part-time category. My husband and I were in different departments, but of course, word travels fast within a company, and Jackson eventually found out about it. My husband himself had never received an award before, so it was awkward for me too. On that day, I was doing the housework when he came home, and his complaints were quite something that evening. Looks like someone's been doing so freaking well, despite the fact that she had only been a stupid housewife for close to 20 years. Only landing that excuse of a job just recently. I personally don't think your accounting skills are good enough to contribute anything even mediocre to the company. Don't let my company go bankrupt, eh? I'm not worried about that, and neither should you. You know what? I'm going to test you. A test to see if you can do the accounting work properly. I was fuming by that point. I was ready to strangle myself with all the insults and the condescension. Jealous of me, like a child, and casting a pall of gloom and doom over me. Plus, what the frick was the point of a test? Why should my husband feel the need to do that to me? I knew it would be too much of a hassle to argue with him about taking his stupid test, so I just went along with it. Okay, here we go. What's five times five? Twenty-five. And then my husband looked so happy when he said, <laughs> Wrong. The answer's thirty. Too bad. This is exactly what an old brainless woman who used to be a housewife is in the picture of health. <laughs> what are you talking about? Imagine five groups of five oranges, Jackson. The answer is twenty-five. And then my husband thought about it for a minute. And it was absolutely hilarious when his entire face turned into tomato red. Not a single word. I was just pretending to be an idiot to see if you'd notice. I'm glad you got it right, Kayleen. He scampered to the bathroom right after he said that. When I came to the conclusion that he made a legitimate mistake in elementary arithmetic, I had to feel sorry for him. He answered 30 with such a purely smug look on his face. I felt like I finally had defeated a battle against my husband, who said the wrong number with such a big smile on his face. I felt like a winner at home for once. I mean, that question was below an elementary school level, even grade school stuff, but okay, let's be honest. I didn't have much going for me. It was such an easy question. That day, my husband made a mistake. And I don't know if it was out of embarrassment that he didn't say anything to me for the rest of the night. And after that, I didn't care what he said anymore. I just did what I could at my accounting job. Then one day, at the office, I overheard a conversation between my husband and his subordinate. 
and the content was absolutely golden. I'm going out on private dinners with a young girl from one of our subcontractors at the company's expense. Pretty Chad, eh? Are you serious, sir? Wouldn't it be dangerous if they found out? Ha, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. No one's ever had a damn clue I've been doing anything. Oh, she's so attractive, and I want to introduce her to you, actually. The juiciest detail, though, is the fact that she actually does work for one of our subcontractors. Even if you don't believe me now, you can check her out on that company's database. And she's really there. That's great, sir. I'm happy for you. You should try it yourself, Flimmy. <laughs> An interesting offer, I, I must admit, but I don't have that kind of courage. Is what I could overhear before I heard their footsteps coming this way. I hurried back to the accounting department and checked the receipts my husband was submitting. After literally a few seconds of digging, I found that compared to other employees, the amount of expenses Jackson was demanding back from the company was significantly larger. The vast majority of them were labeled as entertainment expenses. I knew it would spell doom to his career if his superiors found out he'd been using the company budget for personal purposes. I decided to follow my husband around on his little escapades for a while thereafter. A few days passed since I first overheard the conversation, and one day, Jackson told me that he would be late tomorrow because he had some extra business to attend to before he got home. I saw an opportunity, and after confirming he left the office building, I followed him to see where he went. I found him a short distance from the office, meeting up with another woman, probably that attractive girl from his job subcontractors he was talking about the other day. They then proceeded to go into a fancy restaurant nearby, arm in arm. I got the name of the restaurant, and I went to the office the following few days to see if Jackson would submit a receipt in the restaurant's name. And lo and behold, the very next day, a receipt was submitted in the restaurant's name. It also had my husband's name on it, and it was additionally labeled as an entertainment expense. I confirmed that Jackson was using the company's expenses for his own personal use, and there wasn't even a fleeting smackerel of doubt. I followed him several times after that to see how often he was abusing his Dobbs budget, and I found him together with the same woman every time, and they always went to some restaurant in the city. But one day, it was different. Because of a restaurant, they actually went into a hotel. The hotel was one that was often used for the purpose of taking a midday rest for perhaps a few of hours. I quickly took a picture of them going into the hotel. The photograph was crystal clear, and anyone could recognize the man as Jackson. Once I took that picture, I was hugely satisfied, and I went back home. I'd already assumed that they had that kind of relationship, since they were going to restaurants together pretty much every day. That's why. I wasn't shocked or sad at the time. All I ever felt was satisfaction with myself that I'd handled the situation well, and obtained conclusive evidence against Jackson's affair. The fact that he's cheating on his wife, and he was spending all the company's money? What a disgusting bastard. He came home around the time the date changed that day. Oh, I'm home. Frick. I'm so tired. The faint scent of a woman's perfume drifted around the living room. My husband didn't notice it, and he continued talking to me. I was so disgusted with him that I didn't react to anything he said at all. Not even a sound of response. Nothing. Silence. Deadly silence. At first, he probably thought I couldn't hear him, and I don't know if he cared about my behavior at first. Gradually, he began to realize that I just wasn't reacting whatsoever, and his voice increased in volume and in intensity. Hey, not a welcome home, honey? Hang up my suit or something? <laughs> I don't know, just do freaking something, woman. Forgotten your place in this house, have you, eh? I ignored him. Hey, is my bath freaking ready? Have you become some batshit deaf overnight? You're getting so damn old, aren't you? I ignored it all, every single word that my husband spoke to me. When I looked at my frustrated husband, I didn't pay heed to him anymore. 
You see, this is what I freaking mean. Damn it, an old, blind, deaf witch. A former low-life housewife, now an ugly hag. A useless piece of shit. You can only work so I introduced you to that part-time job, you know. And you don't even thank me. If I didn't do that, you'd still be doing dog shit housework every day while I went and worked my absolute ass off. If you divorce me, you know you'll be freaking fired, right? You'll be nothing but an unemployed hag. I'm gonna make it happen. Mark my words. When my husband said those words, something inside me just snapped. I was going to go through with all the ignoring, but I just couldn't anymore. Seems like you don't know anything about what's going on, huh? Hey. I guess he really didn't know what I was talking about. His face was completely devoid of comprehension. All right then, take a look at this. I showed him the photographs I took over the last few days. I showed him a photograph of me going into a hotel with a woman clutching his arm, and a photograph of him having a dinner at a restaurant with the same woman. I'm gonna report this to the company. In response, Jackson slammed the desk and became furious. What the hell are you talking about? Why are you freaking doing this? I'm a company accountant, Mr. Brook. I'm bound by official conglomerate contract that I have to report it when I suspect someone's been using the company budget to pay for their personal affairs. When I said that, perhaps Jackson realized the potential consequences. He started to panic. I was... I, I was just entertaining a, a woman I do business with. It's all actual entertainment expenses, I'm telling you. I'm sorry, but cheating on your wife does not qualify as an entertainment expense. I'm not having an affair. I was only entertaining her. <sighs> Look at that. Even after I showed you the photographic evidence, you still disregard it and think you can come up with an excuse. I was fed up with Jackson's refusal to admit defeat and admit he did something wrong, and I started to laugh at myself for ever loving this stupid, senseless bag of lard. You're so... Oh, you know what? Never mind. But the fact remains, I'm gonna report this to the company. Go ahead. I freaking dare ya. You really don't have a clue about real-world business, do ya? <laughs> I didn't comprehend what my husband was thinking, but he somehow changed his attitude towards the situation. I'm in sales. I have to entertain a lot of people. And you don't have much accounting experience. A former stay-at-home mum. On top of that, it's only natural you don't know the first thing about business. Wouldn't you agree? You don't know even the things that should be public common knowledge at this point. Suit yourself. I'm leaving the house. I simply packed a few things and left the house without ever saying another word. That night, I decided to stay at a business hotel. The next day, I told my boss in the accounting department everything about the incident. It turned out that basically be an unscheduled hour-long meeting between the two of us. Lucky for me, Mr. Zachariah wasn't busy that morning. Oh my god, I didn't realize. I'm so sorry about this, Mr. Zachariah. I took the liberty of compiling all of my husband's receipts he submitted to the company for the past six months or so. That'll be a big help. I'll pass this along to the president himself. I know you didn't want to report this to me, but this was a very courageous gesture on your part. Thank you, Kaylin. We're so lucky to have you. No problem, sir. I must apologize again for this inconvenience. Oh, no, no, no. Don't you dare do that. This is all Mr. Brooks' fault. I believe this is solid grounds to get him fired. Are you prepared to follow that through? Of course. Let's make sure he takes full responsibility for his wrongdoings. Once I told him that, the meeting was adjourned, so to speak, and Mr. Zachariah took the documents I had put together to the president the same morning. Jackson was dismissed from his job that same afternoon, and he was ordered that he refund the company the amount of money he'd been spending. I made the invoice to my husband myself, and I have to say, I was surprised to see the size of the accumulated bill but that wasn't my problem anymore. That was because I had made up my mind to divorce Jackson. When I came home that day, Jackson was collapsed on the couch, his face in his hands, evidently brokenhearted. So you really did spill the beans, right? 
Yes, I did. And there's more. I hate being with someone like you. You were so kind to me once upon a time, and your daughter loved you so much. But not only did you betray me, you betrayed her. And I cannot allow that to go by without fighting for what you deserve. I want a divorce. I understand. We'll talk about alimony through our lawyers, and you make sure you pay back the money to the company. That's all I told him before I left. We got divorced soon thereafter, and the alimony was paid in one fell swoop. The woman whom he was having an affair with only approached my husband with the intent of getting information about his company. She didn't love him in any way. After my husband divorced me, he apparently attempted to be with her, but since he was fired from the company, she dumped him, saying that she wasn't interested in a jobless crackhead. I filed for alimony against the woman too. I sent a content certified letter to her company. I heard that was the sole reason for her being fired from her job too. As long as she pays me the alimony she owes me, I don't give a good goddamn. I'd feel a lot better if they both fell to the ground, and beyond that, all the way down to the fiery depths of hell. I told my daughter about everything that had happened to her father, because I knew she loved her father very dearly. I was afraid she would be shocked to her core, and perhaps even traumatized that such a father could do such things to her mother. But to my great surprise, her response was wildly different. I noticed that Dad's attitude towards you had always been somewhat cold leading up to when I left home, Mom. There was this icy atmosphere in the house every time I came home from school. I knew then that the man I saw in Dad that I loved was gone. I guess this is Dad's true colors, and that's what he really was all along. I'm ashamed that I ever thought I wanted to marry someone like that. I'm sorry, darling. Oh, don't be sorry, Mom. Do you have a place to live now? I'm in a hotel right now, and I'm trying to find a good place to live. I was thinking of going back to where I grew up. You know, the old neighborhood we used to live in before we moved just after I turned 12. We can live there together again. That's what she said to me. But that wasn't all. I'm getting married, Mom. His name's Vernon, and I told him that I want to live with you, and he kindly gave me his approval. We'll be stopping by sometime within the next few weeks to go pay you a visit. You're gonna love him, Mom. He's everything I've ever wanted in a man. I was thrilled to hear such happy tidings on my daughter's part. And finally, and by everything I ever wanted in a man, I don't mean anything like that at all, Mom. So don't you worry. I'll say this again. You're gonna love him. She laughed mischievously over the phone. I love that sound so much. Then, I went back to work for a while, and focused hard, getting my performance even higher, and doing what I could to help the company out. But suddenly, I was summoned by the president of the company himself. I didn't know if it was because my husband had been fired, and that maybe they'd lost their trust in me, and that's why I felt so nervous when I entered the president's office. I'm sorry you had to go through these hard times, Kayleen, but if it's alright with you, I'd like you to personally ask to stay on at the company. You may be feeling awkward because of your relationship with Jackson was well known throughout the company, but Zachariah has been reporting your performance to me personally. I must say that I've never been impressed by a part-timer before. You're truly making a huge difference in the company, Kaylee, even more than you may realize. That's why I'd like to ask you to stay at the company. Is it really okay, sir? Can I really stay with the company? Of course. It's his fault, not yours. Will you stay? Yes, sir. I will continue to do my job responsibly, and I'll do my best to help bring this company to greatness. And that's how I decided to stay working for the company. At my age, it's not often I'm needed this much, and that's precisely why I will continue to work for the company and contribute to its success to the best of my ability. Wish me luck.